I'm super excited to share an amazing video with you. It's all about five of the most common and useful idioms in English. I think you're gonna love it. Imagine you're having a lively conversation with your pal, and suddenly, he throws in an intriguing expression. This weekend, I plan to stay at home, binge watch my favorite TV series, and recharge my batteries for the upcoming week. But wait, what does it phrase actually mean? If you take them literally, what comes to mind? When someone says recharge your batteries, what are they referring to? Does it bring to mind the image of batteries that power electronic devices? If someone were to tell you to recharge your batteries in a literal sense, what do you think they would be suggesting? Would they be referring to replenishing the energy in your actual batteries, like the ones found in a remote control or a smartphone? But here's the twist. These phrases are actually idioms. Idioms are like hidden treasures that add so much flavor and depth to our conversations. They make them more interesting and expressive. And their meanings go beyond their literal interpretations. So, what do you think they might metaphorically represent in our conversations? Let's uncover the magic behind these expressions and take our conversations to a whole new level of fun. Can't stand. What does it mean? If you come across the phrase can't stand, it usually means that someone has a really strong dislike or intolerance towards a person or thing. Here are a few examples. He can't stand listening to that loud music. The taste of the medicine can't be stood by most children. She can't stand to be around him when he's in a bad mood. Your dog is so cute. What's his name? It's Admet. How old is he? Two months. Do you have any pets? Actually, I don't. We live in an apartment. My dad is allergic to cats and dogs, and my mom can't stand them. She is scared of any pets. That's very surprising. How come? Are you familiar with the phrase how come? How come is a really easygoing way to ask why or show that you're surprised or skeptical about something. It's used a lot in everyday English conversation, so don't be afraid to use it. I have some examples of dialogue that include the phrase how come. How come you're not wearing your usual uniform? Oh, we have a casual dress day today at work. We can wear regular clothes as long as they're appropriate. It's a nice change once in a while. How come you're not going to the party tonight? I have a big project due tomorrow, and I need to finish it tonight. Do you have any pets? Actually, I don't. We live in an apartment. My dad is allergic to cats and dogs, and my mom can't stand them. She is scared of any pets. That's very surprising. How come? To my mind, it's back to her childhood. Maybe. Be busy as a bee. You're probably familiar with bees buzzing around flowers, working hard to collect nectar and create honey. This saying takes inspiration from their tireless and diligent nature, capturing the idea of someone who is extremely busy or hardworking. Just like bees are always on the move, someone who is busy as a bee is constantly engaged in their tasks, energetically working towards their goals. To better grasp the idiom, let's check out a few examples together. During the holiday season, the store is busy as a bee with shoppers. If I were as busy as a bee, I wouldn't have time for hobbies.
She wasn't busy as a bee over the weekend. She took some time off. Hi, Dora. Lucy is speaking. Hi, Lucy. It's been a while. Yeah, I am really busy with work and things like that. What are you up to these days? Not much. I am just doing household chores as usual. How's your family? They are doing well and busy with their work too. Patrick is busy as a bee because his colleague is on vacation again. What about Nancy? What is she doing these days? She is studying for her midterm exams and has just gone to the local park to play tennis with her friend. Recharge your batteries. Can you tell me what the phrase recharge your batteries means? The phrase recharge my batteries is an idiomatic expression that refers to the act of resting, relaxing, or engaging in activities that help restore one's energy, vitality, and overall well-being. It suggests taking a break or engaging in self-care activities to replenish and rejuvenate oneself after a period of physical or mental exertion. Shall we begin making some examples with the idiom? I'm excited to get started. He often recharges his batteries by reading a good book. Yoga and meditation are better methods for her to recharge her batteries compared to other relaxation techniques. How do you recharge your batteries when you're feeling exhausted? The weather is pleasant. I really need a vacation. Me too. I need to travel to recharge my batteries. Let's plan to go somewhere. Let's travel to Italy. It's a cosmopolitan and historic city. We can go to Di Roma and do lots of shopping. Get or have itchy feet. Have you ever heard of the phrase itchy feet? It's actually a fun way to describe that feeling when you just can't wait to explore new places or travel somewhere different. It's like having a strong desire for adventure and new experiences beyond your usual routine. Here are some examples of how this idiom can be used. He gets itchy feet whenever he stays in one place for too long. Do you often experience itchy feet and feel the need to explore new places? I had itchy feet throughout my time in college, so I studied abroad multiple times. The weather is pleasant. I really need a vacation. Let's travel to Italy. Come on. You haven't known I'm not big on history and culture. I get itchy feet now. So think about somewhere we have never been there. What about Hawaii? The weather is lovely now. We can go to Oahu and enjoy the sun. You can have so many adventures. 